Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Lori. It's a joy to be worshiping with you today. Ahead in our service, we have a special treat. We're starting a new sermon series to go with our Vacation Bible School theme, Knights of the North Castle. So there'll be more about that later in the service. You won't want to miss it. Here at Woodline, we're committed to maintaining our online presence for those who are unable to attend and worship in person, as well as those who might be interested in finding out a little bit more about Woodlawn. At Woodlawn, we have a special missional focus each Sunday. If you'd like to know what our mission focus is for today, or like more information about who Woodlawn is as a community of faith and grace, you can find all of that on our website at woodlawnumc.net. Let's join together now in our opening prayer. Gracious God, when storms rage around us, Remind us to clothe ourselves with the whole armor of God, to fasten the belt of truth around our waist, to listen for your direction. When anxiety and fear begin to crawl in, remind us to put on the shoes of your peace to guide us. When doubts fill our mind, remind us to take up the shield of faith. God, be our shelter. When we lose our way, and we are searching for you. Remind us that the sword of the Spirit will accompany us every step of our journey. God, we place our confidence and our trust in you always. Amen.
We come together in a time of prayer, come together lifting our joys and our concerns as one voice, as one people together, united in our faith. If you're a member of Woodlawn and you'd like to receive the prayer requests of our community, you can call the church office anytime during the week and request to be added to the prayer chain email. If you have a prayer request that you would like to lift up today and you're watching on Facebook, you can post that in the comments or call our church office anytime. Let's go together in prayer. Oh, most gracious God, God who supplies our need, meet us in our need today as we come to you. Remind us of the call that you have placed on each of our lives a call to discipleship, to use the gifts that you have given us to love others, to support justice and compassion, to share your grace and your peace. When storms come, help us to lean on you and on each other, remembering the tools of the whole armor of God that we have access to, faith, your righteousness, your truth, your peace, the gift of your grace, and the words of Scripture. Let these all bring us comfort in our time of need and bring comfort to those who are in need this day. We pray for those who grieve and long for loved ones. We also remember those who are sick, hospitalized, receiving medical treatment, caring for aging loved ones. God, you know the prayers and the needs of our heart. And we pause now to lift those up to you. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all this as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to be having some fun here in worship for the next three weeks. Vacation Bible School at Woodlawn starts on June 21st, and boy, plans are already brewing. You've already seen in worship today as we've been changing our background and filming at different parts of the church. Woodlawn is being turned into a castle, the castle for the Knights of the North. During Vacation Bible School Week this year, our children will be learning about the full armor of God. The full armor of God and how that armor protects and prepares us for the challenges of life that lie ahead. But you know, scripture is applicable to Christians and knights of any age. We are going to be doing the same thing in our worship services on Sunday morning, talking about the full armor of God. Couldn't leave the grown-ups out from this important lesson from Scripture. So for the next three weeks in worship, we'll join the Vacation Bible School crew and we'll talk about just that, the full armor of God, what its purpose is, how God expects us and hopes for us to use it, and we will spend each week focusing on two of the six different pieces of the armor listed in this scripture verse from Ephesians. This week, we're going to talk about the whole armor of God, but also on the breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth. Next week, we'll talk about the shoes of peace and the shield of faith. And for our third and final week of our Armor of God series, we'll talk about the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. 
Let's take a look at our scripture lesson for today. This comes from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power, put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and have done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for the saints. There is a lot to unpack here. Maybe when you hear armor of God, there's visions of armies preparing for attack, preparing to charge into battle. But what we read in this scripture is that that's not exactly what the armor of God is for. Most of this equipment that we're hearing about is for defense, for protection. The armor of God is equipping us to withstand the harsh realities of our broken world. It builds us up for perseverance, reminding us that no matter what we face, God has equipped us with tools to help carry us through, even in the darkest of times. You'll notice this is not a list of weapons for a Christian crusade. No, no, this is a list of God's protection and provision. God is supplying truth, peace, faith, righteousness. This is a list of where we can find God in the hard times, when we feel defeated, when we are feeling lonely, afraid, when we're facing the brokenness of the world. We can find God in these places because the strength highlighted and the whole armor of God is not the power or might of the armies or of the knight, the soldier, but of the world-reconciling power of our amazing God. These are not battle plans of attack, but defensive plans for survival. Directions not for conquering foes or tackling dragons, but directions for perseverance. In times of trial and difficult situations, we are equipped with this scripture. It tells us the ways that God equips us and holds us in times of chaos and pain. In fact, as I read this scripture, I hear the vows of our baptism and the vows that we say and hear each time someone is baptized. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers in this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? That's what our armor is for. And another key part about baptism that ties in with our armor of God is that we do not face this world alone. When someone is baptized, they're baptized into community. Both the congregation and the baptized person or their parents, if they're an infant, take vows at that moment. It's about the church as a whole. 
And we see that reflected in our scripture in Ephesians as well. This you is not a singular, singular you, but the collective we, collective you. We together put on the armor of God to protect us, the body of Christ, to withstand and stand up for, to preach and to share faith, truth, righteousness, peace, grace, and the love of God. So what does that look like? Well, over the next three weeks, we're going to break down each of these six pieces of armor and unpack what it looks like to truly put on the whole armor of God, equipped to withstand those personal temptations, heartache, brokenness of this world. Let's first look at the, our first two pieces of armor, the breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth. As we look at these two pieces, righteousness and truth, I'm reminded of a few scripture verses. Isaiah 1.17 says, Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Micah 6.8, a familiar verse that says, He has told you what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God? We see in these examples and in the life of Christ that standing up to injustice is both righteous and true. Jesus pursued justice, both physically and spiritually. We see that in time and time again in Jesus' care for the vulnerable. Jesus sought out children who were considered the least of these, made time for them. Jesus said, you matter to me, to those whom the world had said, you don't matter. Now see, while the armor of God is a line of defense, let's not think that it's passive or stagnant. We're not called to complacency, we trudge forward seeking justice and truth as a part of our call of discipleship. We're called to persevere with our armor of righteousness and truth. But that armor is not all that we carry with us to equip us for that calling. We have God-given gifts, each and every one of us, to make a difference in this broken world. God is calling us to stand up for justice and to speak truth for the oppressed, for the marginalized, for those who the world has said, you don't matter. And with our belt of truth, we remember that these are not battles of flesh and bone, as our scripture says, but battles of ideals and systems of oppression where these systems and society has told us that certain people don't matter or matter less than others. But we know God's truth. We know that all people matter to God. All of creation is important to our God. Our belt of truth keeps us grounded to deny those lies that systems and oppression have told us and to faithfully stand up for what is righteous as we stand beside the vulnerable and as we recognize our own vulnerabilities that connect us all to each other. A belt holds things up, holds things secure, just as truth holds us up and is a security for us to help us feel confident as we stand on the promises of God. When has God held you up? Can you think of a time when God has called you to hold someone else up, to stand up with someone who finds themselves in a vulnerable situation? This armor, the full armor of God, is for us as individuals with heartache and brokenness that we face on a personal level, but it's also for the church as a whole. 
as the systems of injustice and oppression plague our broken world, the evils that are among us. We suit up, we stand up, and we persevere through as the body of Christ together as one. We don't have to stand alone. We don't have to do it alone. Together as disciples, we don the full armor of God. And with its boldness, we are able to do so. Furthermore, the opening instruction in verse 10, be strong, is a reminder that we are strengthened by God in all communal dimensions already described in the book of Ephesians, living with love and peace towards one another, singing hymns and praising God together, speaking truthfully and forgiving one another, reflecting Christ in our homes and in our closest relationships. This is what the book of Ephesians tells us the body of Christ is about. Do we really need all this armor for our walk in faith and discipleship. Maybe that's what you're thinking. Do we really need all this armor? It's probably pretty heavy. But the answer is yes. The answer is yes. And our, our scripture distinctly says, put on the whole armor of God, no matter how heavy it is. Use all the resources and tools that God has made available to and within you. We need them for our own individual struggles, and we need them to face the evils and the struggles of the world as a body of Christ together, to persevere and stand against all that does not nourish God's beautiful creation. We wear these gifts together. We suit up, stand up, and persevere together to answer the call from God to do justice, to love mercy, to walk humbly with our Lord, to walk with the whole armor of God. Not just one part or one piece, but every piece. The shield of faith, the shoes of peace, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. All a gift from God that we cultivate and nurture and grow through spiritual devotion, discipleship, learning, and growing in our faith. We've been given all that we need to stand strong against the efforts of anything that opposes God's peace. And the greatest gift in all of this is that we are not alone. We're never alone. God is with us each step of the way on each journey that we travel. And God shows up for us in community, in the body of Christ. God is present in people. The gift of church is that we're standing shoulder to shoulder together, facing heartache, facing brokenness of the world together. And do you know that if God shows up for you in other people, God will use you to show up for others as well. I hope you'll join us next week as we continue this awesome journey with the Knights of the North Castle, discovering our armor of God and the ways that God calls us to justice, mission, and ministry through our discipleship, and through our many gifts. Next week, we'll look at the shoes of peace and the shield of faith. Until then, may the God of love, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.